How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Alonzo with CB Graphics Custom Airbrush and Paint. And on today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can take a paper stencil and apply it to airbrushing. Okay, so the first step in using a paper stencil is getting the image that you wanna use. So all I did was went on the internet and search the image I was looking for, and then I printed it out. Once I printed the image out, I used my cutting mat and took my X-Acto blade and I cut the outline of my image out. Then what I did was I cut these little triangle squares here into the image and placed tape onto it that way it will stick to the surface. And then I come and I start airbrushing my image. All right, so I went ahead off camera and I scuffed up the panel using the gray scotch pad. Now I'm taking some Autobahn sealer black and white and I made a gray mixture and I'm using my airbrush gun and applying that background. So after letting the panel sit for a few minutes, I went ahead and applied the stencil. Now I'm taking a little darker gray mixture and going over the stencil so I can get everything mapped out. As you will see, I will keep lifting the stencil up and that's me just double checking to make sure everything went through and I have everything mapped out. Now I'm coming in and I'm just doing a little bit of freehand airbrush and building up the texture for the background. So now you see me coming in with some reduced black, just getting the darker tones mapped out. The skull eventually is gonna be white, but I don't wanna lose what I already transferred over with the paper stencil. So I'm coming in with the black now, and then I'll come back and get the skull white. By me doing this, I'm not losing too much and I can still see the design. So the paint that I'm using to do this panel is the Createx airbrush paint. This here is the Wicked line, which is a water-based paint. Uh, for those who've been following me, know that I usually use urethane paints. I use House of Color, been using it for years, but I'm trying to give the water-based paint a try. So y'all will see as the video goes on that I use the stencil, and then I take the stencil off and do some freehanding. My reason for this is you don't want the finished product to look like it's just a sticker or that a stencil was used, you want to get some soft edges in there. So that's why you want to use a little bit of both, freehand and the stencil. So I thought I was recording when I started spraying the white, but I wasn't. So this is where I picked back up on the video. This is with me spraying some reduced black, going ahead and getting some shadows laid down, doing the eyes, trying to get some detail, and then I will eventually take my texture stencil and start adding some texture to the skull. So if you're new to the channel and you like what you see, consider subscribing to the channel and clicking that notification bell so you don't miss none of my future videos. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't, give it a thumbs down. So now I'm just coming in with some reduced white, just add some more detail to the skull. Getting the eyes done up. And like I said, we're just trying to slowly build up the texture and give the skull some more character. So I was pretty bad about hitting the record button while I was doing this video here, but I went ahead off camera and I used my texture stencil and applied some texture to the skull. But when y'all using stencils and um, doing designs, put your own personal touch to it. That's how, you know, make it a little more original. So that was like the Gears of War stencil, but I decided to make the skull white and just add some eyes and just add a little bit of color to it. That's some red oxide candy 2-0 colors by Createx, but just giving it my own little personal touch. All right, y'all, so there you have it. A quick way how you can use a paper stencil to transfer your image to do your airbrush painting. I hope y'all enjoyed the video, and we'll catch you on the next one. 